yeah, let's begin. First of all, I'm Zeki, and we are organizing this uh, workshop with Pia. Uh, it, this workshop is not organized under any particular name, uh, but I'm uh, at least in the community, primarily from uh, Q World and Q Turkey. And uh, Lia is from Full Stack Quantum Computing and many, uh, many, many other uh, groups. <laughs> She's rather active. Uh, and the reason that we want to, to organize this thing was, well, I think we know, a lot of us know each other from you know, different events, different kind of collaboration, uh, you know, maybe conferences, but, um, I started to realize, and also we, uh, we uh, kindly pointed out that there are some uh, communication, uh, let's say, it's mi missing a little bit uh, between our uh, groups, between ourselves, uh, especially, uh, you know, the, there's a very diverse uh, interest from uh, very different groups uh, in quantum technologies and quantum computing, particularly around the world. Uh, but we wanted to primarily focus on the grassroots initiatives uh, and especially grassroots initiatives with uh, much younger, uh, you know, founders, leaders, participants, uh, because, well, we hope to be around in the community for longer than the established researchers and established groups. Uh, so I think it would be beneficial to start uh, discussing about the future of these technologies, what kind of a future we want, what are our values, what are our practices. Uh, so in that sense, let uh, we hope that, uh, you know, just by being here, just by sharing our experiences, just by introducing our uh, organizations and groups and institutions and informal efforts, uh, we can start a dialogue. Or, or hopefully multiple dialogues between different partners. Uh, it is entirely uh, unnecessary for the RI to be directly involved. You can just reach out to others uh, in this community uh, after listening to their presentation. And you know, if you think there are uh, some uh, commonalities uh, between your goals and you know your operations, and um, yeah, so some housekeeping rules. Uh, I will uh, be the timekeeper, so I will try to keep everyone in check. Uh, so you will have, at least for the presentations, you will have approximately five to six minutes. Um, it's entirely up to you if you want to accept questions or not. Uh, then we can also have uh, a short Q&A in the end as well. But uh, as I said, it's uh, you know, up to you. Uh, and following that, uh, we will have a, a minor board uh, exercise where uh, we will open up breakout rooms and then randomly assign people uh, so that you can kind of discuss in five minutes, uh, you know, what are your organizations doing similarly, what are they doing differently, what can we do better, and why are we doing these things. So you should have received a minor board invitation Please let me know if you can't, uh, you know, sign up or log in because, to be honest, I haven't tried this before with this many people. So let's see how it goes. And I would like to leave the uh, floor to Liana uh, for a couple of minutes so that she can also introduce herself. And I don't want to, you know, have the entire conversation because it, it was primarily her idea to do this. Ah, thank you, Zaki. Um, I won't, I will keep it short. Uh, basically, uh, Zaki said most of it. Um, basically, I'm really excited to, uh, there's some familiar faces that I know here, but there's a lot that I don't know and just, just uh, realized that there's so much efforts often going around in quantum education and outreach and community building. Um, just, just all over the world. I think it's really cool and incredible to, to meet you all. So I'm really excited and I hope um, there'll be lots of really interesting conversations and uh, maybe uh, probably there's a lot of intersections of what we're all working on as well. Um, so I'm just really looking forward to it. Thank you all for, for joining and uh, hope you have a good time. Okay, so that's great and we are even ahead of schedule. Uh, so, 
I would like to, I think, introduce, uh, or let's say, uh, give the floor to Misty. Uh, can you please check whether you can share the screen, or I don't know whether you have slides or something? Okay, great. Um, yes, so... Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear That's That's great. And well, first of all, thanks for accepting our invitation. And yeah, in the community, I think there are a lot of groups that are, are rather uh, grateful for what Winter Fund has been doing and as you know, it's continuously doing for the, for the entire community and the quantum computing as, or in quantum algorithms in general. So I don't want to take more of your time and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm Misty Wall. Um, I'm a member of the technical staff at Unitary Fund, and it's great to be here. Um, so for those of you who are maybe not as familiar with Unitary Fund, we're a nonprofit organization, um, and we're um, trying to create a technology ecosystem that benefits the most people. And we do that in a few different ways. Um, the first is our microgrant program. Um, so we give $4,000. Um, for small projects in quantum technology. Um, and then we also have um, our own um, in-house, but um, fully open source projects, uh, MITIC, which is a Python toolkit for quantum error mitigation, and Metric, um, which is a benchmarking platform um, that anyone can submit um, articles or data to Metric, and um, we can use that to track the state of the art in quantum. And we are also big on building community around um, quantum technology. So um, this is a perfect event for that. Um, and we also host a lot of um, projects, open source projects in quantum on our Discord. So um, we do that for Qtip. Um, we also sponsored um, Unitary Hack. And so that's an annual hackathon. And um, that's also for open source quantum projects. Um, this past year, we had over 30 projects join um, and uh, 66 bounties completed. So um, yeah, just getting the community to um, contribute to open source, people who haven't, um, who aren't really involved in quantum, but want to um, move into quantum. And uh, oh, I see a message on the chat. Maybe I should speed up. <laughs> and uh, okay. So yeah, just quickly. No, no please, please continue. We still have time. Okay. Um, so this is our team. Um, and also, um, in addition to the Interior Fund team, we have um, ambassadors who are um, fantastic volunteers in our community um, that, yeah, contribute to open source for fun and um, believe in our mission and are spreading the word about Unitary Fund. So we're really grateful to them. Um, I think Alberto is here, uh, so good to see you. And um, we also have um, an advisory board, um, some of whom are from um, former um, grantees um, and also uh, recognized experts in the field um, from industry, academia, and government labs. A little bit more about our microgrant um, program. So, um, like I said, it's four thousand um, dollars for uh, projects in quantum technology. Um, so, we've had uh, seventy-two microgrants um, recipients all over the world. Um, over seventeen publications. Uh, we have a lot of uh, libraries um, as a result, and. These microgrant projects, they are no strings attached, microgrants are no strings attached funds. Um, so we're um, just wanting to help explorers in quantum um, make their projects a reality, make their um, ideas, turn that into something that will um, be useful to the community that's open source. Um, and that also um, helps build up the, the ecosystem as a whole. And just to note also, these are usually um, kind of shorter term projects, so three to six months in duration. Um, and uh, I really encourage anyone who has an idea for a microgrant project um, to apply um, at uh, unitary.fund slash grants. 
And just um, real quick about MITIC. So this is um, started as an in-house project um, for quantum error mitigations, Python toolkit to apply different quantum error mitigation techniques. Um, and uh, it works with many front ends. It's back end independent. Um, we have uh, many of the popular error, error mitigation techniques like zero noise extrapolation, um, but we're quickly adding um, to that. And um, and this is a fully open source project, so anyone in the community can contribute to this, um, whether you're an enthusiast or a student or a researcher. Um, we really want to get as many people using MITIC and contributing to MITIC as possible. And in fact, that's how I got into quantum is um, by contributing to MITIC and eventually um, yeah, joining the team at Unitary Fund. So it's these open source projects can be can be really powerful in that way. And I'd be happy to talk more about that in the breakout sessions. And uh, Metric um, is our benchmarking platform. And so this is um, a, a website where anyone can um, submit data from um, an archive paper or from your own data set. Um, and uh, it helps us track the state of the art um, in the field. So this is a plot of quantum volume over time. And so you can see that um, it's trending up, but there are probably quite a few data points that are missing here. Um, and it only goes to July 2022 in this plot. Um, I think it's more updated than that um, at this point. But the point is, please, um, if you have um, an article up on archive, um, or if you see something that um, a new benchmarking result, uh, check metric.info, see if it's there. And if it's not, please go ahead and submit. We really want this to become useful to everyone um, in the community and be able to track these important metrics um, like quantum volume. And so, yeah, that's uh, the overview of the main things that we're doing at Unitary Fund. There's a lot more, um, but uh, I will give the floor to the next person. Thank you. Thank you, Misty. Uh, as always, it's, it's wonderful to hear from uh, Unitary Fund. So we will uh, move on because, uh, as you know, we have a, a crowded uh, schedule and then there are also two additional uh, talks that we will have that are not on the schedule. So let's continue with our second uh, speaker. Okay, so let's continue with uh, Emily. Emily, are you here? Okay, okay, perfect. Uh, Working yeah, it's it's great. So the the floor is yours. Well, thank you. Thanks for organizing this as well. It feels nice to be a bit more connected. Um, quickly on me, I did my bachelor's in physics and then moved to Munich to do a master's in quantum science and technology. And I've been doing that for the last two and a half years, and I'm going to finish eventually soon. Um, but essentially, I just realized the importance of sort of researchers, although I want to stay close to the research myself, just sort of being in touch with the public as well and sort of the wider stakeholders in new technologies um, and sort of the ability for us all to shape the landscape of the projects that we want to enter into eventually. So for me, I really would like to see it, the tech sort of applied to something that I feel is worthwhile. So for me, this was um, sort of mitigating or adapting to climate change eventually um so that's why i joined push quantum because to me push quantum is it's a, it's a community that was founded in munich it's centered in munich um but is growing and it's to me it acts as a sandbox for students that students can join and either can join in other people's projects and ideas and build their own skills or come with their own ideas and be given Sort of the resources to be able to fulfill these projects and so i don't know i need to scroll it this way um so the main mission of push quantum is this hands-on education that it's uh complementary to everything we're learning academically and sorry i'm just going to take that view again quickly and so then and it's all about community building so 
we have we do this in a variety of ways. This is push quantum as a whole as well, just to be clear. Um, so these are different like outreach events and the workshops, internships, and just sort of many opportunities. So I can quickly go through some of these we've had in the past. There's a leadership and quantum series that really connected students to the sort of leaders in the field at the moment. And also with this, we had things like exchange trips to other um, cities with quantum masters. And so we can really get to know everything from their perspective as well and see and just sort of swap ideas on this. And then we had the first hackathon in Munich and uh, boot camps as well for Kiskit to sort of, again, this is just like sort of open to like the whole audience that we organize it within Push Quantum, but it's open to any, everybody. Um, and then we also created a course. So this is a accredited course at the university that, um, again, people outside of um, quantum can join so we bring business people and software people and really the only prerequisite is just an interest in quantum and we really through different lectures and like sort of seminar series bring people up to speed on what they need to know about quantum to be able to actually create their own quantum startup and so then over a course of the semester they work on an idea from a challenge partner that is sort of something they are dealing with and they work then with a quantum provider to come up with a quantum solution for this and so they have a lot of support in creating this and then eventually it's about how to actually like streamline that process to be able to have a viable idea at the end of it and so these are some of the past use cases we've had for this i can move on though um and some of the past like companies that have been involved with this and then we also have done a lot of fun outreach so talking at various uh conferences and then with push quantum climate i can maybe uh speak later a little bit we have had exhibitions at the deutsches museum as well and so essentially this is all about the community but i can quickly talk on the climate branch of this as well is that we have this three pillar approach that is mitigating its impact along the way then also about the applications in the end so that we may actually have this be an overall carbon negative endeavor in the end which would essentially make it worthwhile at this um, day and age and part of what comes under that is then also the communication and sort of really making sure that people are like because this is obviously so publicly funded at the moment that there is still a dialogue with the public and this idea of it being carbon negative overall in light of climate change really plays into this idea of sort of just a basis around which to have the conversation of why do we create technologies and that everybody in quantum would say that they're doing it to support um, and like sort of better the world and in the public's interest but we just want to make sure that we actually have a dialogue with the public and that people are informed about it and can hold it accountable as well and so that's a lot of what our activities have been under the communication aspect as well. Um, and then under minimizing sort of the energy costs, we're also then heavily involved with the Quantum Energy Initiative, which is a separate initiative, but I can also talk more on if anyone's interested. Um, and that is really sort of coming up with the research to actually answer the question of, is this, are quantum computers, where on the scale of being able to offer not just a computational advantage, but also an energy advantage compared to classical computers versus are they going to be so energy intensive that it's just a completely limiting factor. Um, and then on the applications side, we have also been involved with sort of writing grants. So with IQM, they got a grant from World Fund to really look at the climate applications of quantum tech. And essentially we want to then look in the future at sort of um, resource estimation, different ideas like this, as well as actually furthering the research. research. Uh, so yeah, that's, I can just, sort of, if anyone has questions, I can give more, but I'm aware of time, so I can just end it there. But, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Uh, and it's it's great to hear from Push Quantum. You know, you know I like you guys, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's continue. And next we will have Taima. And 
she will actually uh, introduce three different organizations so she gets a pass and 10 minutes so the floor is yours I think you might meet me. Okay. okay, perfect. Yeah, so I've just talked. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Neva Dhamani. Actually, as as Zeki mentioned, I will be introducing three of my organizations. Actually, they are my organizations, my organizations that I work with. Primarily, I'm uh, the ambassador of Libya in Girls in Quantum. Girls in Quantum is a global organization who aims to provide educational resources for girls and young students who might not have that big opportunity to get involved in such big organizations. Um, actually, we aim for girls as the names Girls in Quantum as the girls are, especially young girls, are not getting involved in many uh, tech fields, especially quantum. So yeah, this is our main vision. And we inspire the girls as written here, uh, inspire the st our students um, by discussing with them, uh, inspiring them with working with many, uh, with many events, giving webinars and such other things. We connect, may try to uh, prepare that env environment where all the students can share their uh, experiences, ask questions and just gather together. And we col collaborate with other organizations uh, for events and other talks, conversations and webinars. And some those are some of our past events. Uh, we had uh, we have a series called Quantum, Quantum Conversations and in the uh, monthly webinars, which are uh, those are some of their examples. And of course, at the end of the presentation, I would share uh, ways to contact with us if you would be interested. So next is QWorld. Uh, QWorld is a global organization um, spreading the knowledge of quantum technology. Um, we actually make workshops that, such as Cube Rounds uh, in the Q Cousins department. Actually, I am a, the member of, a member of the Q Cousins department, and we make um, workshops such as Cube Rounds, Q Silver, and Kinical. Uh, in those uh, workshops, we, uh, we share the, the basics of quantum computing until getting to quantum programming with Qiskit and other stuff. Uh, this is one of the exam examples of the last year for Qatar's integrating workshop. And yeah, that was a bit short. Uh, actually, I get into now Kilibia. Actually, Kilibia, I'm a board member of Kilibia, where Kilibia is one of the Q cousins of Q World. Uh, in Q cousins, here we gather Q, uh, Q cousins from all the globe. Any country who wants to be a Q cousin with uh, Q World, we it gathers uh, a team and go fo follows the guidelines for the organization, and you form a Q cousin. And Kilibia is one of the uh, uh, Q, Q World's Q cousins, and I'm a board member there. We organize events and do more other things. Uh, we share a, a series, introduction series, and other stuff. And of course, you can contact with us with the links uh, I will provide later. So it was just this is just a quote I wanted to share that uh, Richard Feynman once said that never confuse education with intelligence as it's not important if you have a PhD or cer a certificate to be intelligent. You get to have that talent and being clever is enough to in get involved in any field that you would like to. So nothing stops you if you don't have a, a certificate or something similar, you would say that this is not for me or something. You can just go ahead. As I am 15 years old and I don't have that much certificate or PhD and I get involved in this field, I'm really happy, I'm still learning and it's just an amazing journey. So you can contact us uh, via, via our websites and LinkedIn pages. You can maybe take a screenshot if you would like to. And of course, if you have any questions, you can reach me through my email or my LinkedIn page. And yeah, thank you for your attention. Uh, Taima, can you just go back one slide? Because I think people were not able to take yeah, the screenshot sure. <laughs> because you just, you know, <laughs> uh, just, and, and I think we still have a couple of minutes. Uh, so if anyone has questions, uh, for example, John asks, will slides be made available? So that's a good idea. If anyone wants to share their slides, we can create a, a joint, uh, I don't know, not Google Drive, but 
you know a joint folder and then share the slides with uh, everyone as well uh, so if you want to after the event just uh, send your presentation to us and then we can share it with yes, uh, all the, all the rest that. of the group. Okay, perfect. That's great. Uh, and as I said, I have uh, a, I had a, I yeah, had a perfect for Tama. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, Tama, thank you so much for an excellent presentation. Um, I'm really interested in learning from you about uh, your perspective on uh, when you're working with students who are your own age and, you know, very early on in your careers, what are some of the resources that you recommend to students who want to begin learning about quantum computation um, at a very, very beginner level? This is a problem that I'm very interested in, and I would love to hear your perspective as a 15-year-old, like what resources you find useful. Yes, uh, thank you for, for your question. So for research, resources, uh, maybe the best resource is Qiskit textbook. They just go ahead with you from the start, from the beginning from the uh, uh, quantum mechanics, quantum introduction, like what are qubits and gates and circuits, and introduction to Qiskit, programming language. And also you can follow their uh, videos and tutorials on YouTube. They are really helpful. But actually there is a problem that I face personally is the um, quantum, uh, the mathematics that's needed in the quantum mechanics. Because, as you know, in my age, I don't study that um, advanced mathematics. So I struggle with that. I just try to study the linear algebra and so on. So it's better, really amazing to get um, to get to know those math maths before you get into the field because they are really important. Yeah, that's really helpful. Um, a set, quick follow-up question, because uh, you brought up the math. That was kind of the, a big thing that I've been struggling with as well is figuring out what, how do you, um, provide a substantive education in, in quantum uh, at, at a level where maybe the, the math isn't isn't so much there. Do you find that it's easier to engage with the programming side of quantum computing than the math? Does that provide an easier ramp of entry or what are your thoughts on that? Okay. Okay. Can you please clear the question more? Sure. I can get it exactly. Uh, yeah, of course. And sorry, if other folks have questions too, I don't want to hog the hog the yeah. hog your time. But my question was like, let's say you have a student, you want to introduce them to quantum computing and you want to do it in a rigorous and substantive way. Do you try to teach them the linear algebra and then try to teach them, use that to teach them the, the mathematics of quantum computing? Or do you try to teach them to program uh, in Python, uh, like a simple quantum circuit? Do you find the programming is easier? to teach or to access for yourself? Okay, for your question, this uh, it depends on the student as if they have already a simple knowledge about those needed math maths, it would be easier to start with the mathematics as it won't be such a hard thing to start with. But on the other hand, if the student doesn't have that big knowledge about mathematics yet, it's better to start with programming as it's much easier than mathematics from my point of view. Thank you so Thank much. You so Great much work. Keep, keep going. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's that's great. And I also shared one of our uh, previous papers on this exact, uh, well, that is uh, an adjacent question about physics and computer science and math. Uh, so there was another question by Aziz. And Aziz, if you want to ask, you can. If not, we can continue. It's up to you. Uh, I actually uh, don't have a question, but rather an answer, an answer to one question is about what are the best resources for a young uh, student to learn about quantum computing. Okay, because that's great. I'm also a high school student, so I have a, a, quite an idea about what can be the best resource. I think that like the best program that a high school student especially can benefit from is the Qubit by Qubit one year long course. I participated in this course. The, this year, and it was my first uh, uh, learning resource about quantum computing, and it really gave me a fundamental understanding of quantum computing because there are weekly lectures uh, and weekly lab sessions, also with assignments and homeworks. And then if the student wants to do additional work, he can uh, read some books about linear algebra, quantum mechanics. But I truly believe that for a beginner, the qubit by qubit course is, uh, is an extraordinary uh, learning resource. So shout out to the coding school. Yeah. And uh, I do also have a, a second answer about the question about should we touch uh, programming or, uh, 
or linear algebra, I think that the programming would be easier because programming is kit is kit kit. It's not that difficult, but like the math, there has to be some background a bit in. Uh, there has to be some mathematical background, but the programming in Cascade is not uh, that difficult. Thank you so much, Mohammed. I really appreciate that. Thank you uh, again to Taima. Great presentation. That's that's great. And again, thank you, Taima, for uh, being on schedule and for, for opening up some space for the questions. So next uh, on schedule, we have Brian, but instead of Brian, we will have Bobby from uh, from the Quantum Philippines. Um, but can you share your screen or or yeah, it's copy here? Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? So, okay, uh, thank you. Yes. Let's let's try the screen, and if everything is all right, I will just leave the floor. Okay. So, okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Great. We can we can see the screen, and uh, okay. Yeah. Well, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. Uh, my name is Bobby Corpus. Um, uh, I'm not really young, <laughs> yeah, young at heart. Um, yeah, so I'm the president of um, uh, One Quantum Philippines, and um, we actually started as Quantum Computing Philippines in uh, 2017. And uh, so the Philippines is just very, very new to this uh, technology, and um, it was only in um, 2021, uh, I think it was May of 2021 when the Philippines uh, started to drop its um, its uh, roadmap for quantum computing. And because we were the only one, the, the only group that was uh, visible in the Philippines. So we were also invited uh, to participate in drafting the, the roadmap. And then in uh, in 2022, thanks to Brian here, uh, it was uh, his effort that uh, we were uh, assimilated into One Quantum as uh, One Quantum Philippines uh, chapter. And then uh, uh, just this year, um, we 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 were appointed a seat in the Quantum Technology Board, the Philippines. So essentially, our our job is to uh, take a look at the ro roadmap and make sure that it is uh, achieve achievable, and also to um, to take a look at uh, across the board uh, any quantum uh, technology projects, and uh, be able to facilitate and to evaluate if uh, um, that project is something that we can fund or the uh, Department of, uh, of Science and Technology can fund. And also, uh, just uh, May of this year, we reject, we registered ourselves as uh, ourselves as uh, Quantum Computing Society, Society of the Philippines. Uh, we need to, we needed to do that because that's the only way for us to uh, uh, have a memorandum of agreements uh, legally binding uh, with uh, the uh, uh, Philippine government. And yeah, so just uh, just today, actually, we. We had that uh, signing of the memorandum of agreement with the Department of Science and Technology, and uh, essentially it means that they will help us uh, fund any activities that we will do uh, regarding the uh, prom um, promotion, uh, promoting of uh, of uh, quantum technologies, uh, making making quantum, uh, making all the Filipinos as much as possible be aware of of this technology. Yeah, so um, our, our activities, uh, first we began uh, using face-to-face -face meetups that was before the pandemic. And then after that, uh, we switched to, uh, during the pandemic, we just switched to online and uh, we stream our, our meetups in uh, YouTube. Um, so we also strive to have our own content as well. So like, for example, um, we have a series of lectures, uh, like seven lectures, just merely on uh, understanding uh, Shor's algorithm. And, and, and all of these algorithms, we try to uh, make them as much as possible uh, digestible and hopefully um, 
be understandable by by high school students. But of course, that's something that is uh, is uh, our dream because uh, it's. I found out that it's 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 quite hard to explain something uh, uh, abstract. Uh, there's need there, there needs to be some mathematical maturity in, in the part of the um, of the uh, of the student. Yeah, so we are also invited to speak at conferences like uh, the 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 Philippine Physics Conference, uh, also the Computer Science Conference in the, the Philippines. These are local conferences, and uh, we were invited to be a panel in Quantum Tech in Singapore just this April. And for our activities, uh, we are quite busy this year because uh, we are, we are de delivering a course in uh, one of the universities in in the Philippines, a state university. And after that, we there's another another one, the pipeline, another university. So uh, creating the content for that is uh, is quite uh, is making us busy. And at the same time, we are also organizing a hackathon. Um, uh, with the support of IBM, but this hackathon is not something which is um, you know advanced. It's it's really more for um, just for awareness. So in this hackathon, we will just be uh, asking the the, the students uh, to play a game about quantum computing. Yeah, so that's us. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, if you have any questions, you just uh, you know. And message me, and also Brian here, and Dylan uh, also is here. So, yeah, so that, that's us. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you, Robert. That that's great, and uh, yeah, I think some people will definitely reach out to you because it's it's such a, a huge feat to start as a grassroots organization and end up in a national board for the yeah. for the roadmap. So, congratulations. Yes. Thank and I think much. I think we can accept one question from John and then uh, continue with the presentations. Yes, uh, Bobby, that was uh, that was fantastic. I was really interested. Um, one one thing that you mentioned that I wanted to learn more about is the course uh, the courses you said you were developing. So yes. are these in, are these intended for um, or like a early like a accessible to low level undergraduates uh, teaching the basics of quantum information or what is the what kind of content yeah. you're developing? Okay, so this content is really geared towards uh, um, computing, like the computer science part of the of, uh, of quantum computing. So essentially, uh, we we don't. We don't uh, discuss anything about quantum mechanics except that uh, if anyone wants to uh, go into quantum computing, they only need to understand that uh, you know um, superposition is real. And once they they embrace that, then we can go into quantum computing. So yeah, so the courses that we're developing. Um, so from from what I see, it's uh, it's something that. Uh, so, so we try to, for example, in the Shores algorithm, we try to really uh, first discuss what's really about what's re what's RSA, how do you crack it, what's elliptic curve, how do you crack it, and then how do you crack it from a quantum computing perspective? Yeah. Very exciting. Hey, thank you. Thank that's you. that's great. So uh, I think Dylan was uh, raising his hand, but. Yeah. Do, do yeah, you I'm, want to I'm ask a question? Part with, no, I'm just part of... Uh, oh, okay, okay, that's here. great. So I, I just like to add on that, since uh, I'm also part of the team that's developing the uh, course content for universities. So uh, the awareness, actually, or the the level of competency of the quantum in quantum technologies in the Philippines is really um, not that impressive, especially in the professional level as well. It's not just, uh, it's not the same as neighboring countries like Japan, Korea, and China for uh, in terms of quantum uh, technology. So we're actually doing a top-down approach here, starting from the educators themselves and together with un low-level undergrads, then um, high school. So you're trying to capacitate first the educators so that once the students are already ready, there's really someone that could support them when they're learning in the long term. 
So that's uh, the current approach uh, in one quantum of Philippines. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks. So thanks, thanks for the clarification. And, and yeah, we also agree that teachers training and trainers training, they are also very important. You know, just it's not enough just to train people, but you also need to train others to train people because that, that is more impactful. Thank you. So let's let's continue uh, with the presentations. And I think next we will have Ryan Yu. Uh, so if possible, yes. Okay, yes, okay, that's perfect. And the floor is yours. Okay, um, my name is Ryan Yu and I'm from Taiwan. Today I will introduce SQCS. And before I introduce SQCS, I will introduce Qualcomm which is uh, an activity and um, SQCS supports it and we hold it in Taiwan. So what is SQCS? Um, SQCS is a, a student quantum computer society in Taiwan. And we give students some course or a, and a platform, a platform to discuss or to have some resources to the quantum computing. Different from other um, organization, we use tra traditional uh, traditional Chinese to, to, to talk and to learn quantum. But they will have, uh, uh, and this is our educational uh, achievements. We have, uh, we hold a quantum computing workshop in, in my high school. Yeah, and also we publish, uh, I publish a book it um this book are talking uh, uh we're talking about some maybe some rest and some exper uh, experience for for my learning experience yes and in 2022 we hold a hackathon camp by myself and we we hold it for for 40 people and we also have a mini course for high school students so i will take a train and go to high school to teach students some uh, what is quantum computing and how to enter this field. And in 2021, we hold the first quantum computing workshop for, uh, for high school students. And uh, the, um, uh, the most amazing thing is that all the coach or all the teacher are high school students. We use high school students to teach other high school students, just just like the, the uh, just like the before somebody say we need to training uh, educator to 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 train other student. We did it, and also in 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 the twenty twenty one, I published this book because I think in Taiwan we uh, the Taiwanese student didn't have uh, enough. Um, Taiwanese maybe book to learning. We don't have enough um, Chinese book or Chinese resources. So this will be the most uh, will be the most barrier for uh, for Taiwanese student because they they are not uh, they didn't do very well in English. So this book is very uh, it, it is interesting for everyone and that I can use this book to learning quantum computing more convenience. Also, in 2022, we hold another quantum hackathon for more high school students. And why we, why, what's the difference between this hackathon camp and the workshop? In the workshop, we only give students some course and, uh, and, and we ask a coach to give give them a, a topic and they will follow this topic to do that they want to do. And but in this quantum hackathon in 2022, I have more time to prepare. So it will be more, uh, it, it will be more bigger than, uh, is much bigger than before. And in this camp, we, ho uh, we have 70 people to, to be our participants. And we have seven topic, and each to and before each topic we have a uh, four or very completed um, course to make student uh, to to make student understand maybe linear algebra or programming and some physics. And we all oh this this is me and. Um, 
in nowadays, um, I will go to high school and in uh, enter to the class and to to share some quantum computing um experience to um, and tell them how to enter quantum fields and how how wonderful the quantum technology is. Yes. And after I told you some uh, achievements we did, and now I will introduce some different social media we, we use. And the first we use Instagram. We have an Instagram called SQCS2020. And sorry for the, the, the language problem. We only have the Taiwanese, uh, only have the Chinese, yes. And we also have Facebook. This core plan and each each of them have different di different uh di uh, have different way to do. And in Instagram, we use it is Instagram to share some uh quantum maybe quantum news and uh, tell them uh where have some uh maybe queries or a hack song you can uh, you can enter or you can join. And we also have Facebook and. Uh, the Facebook is same um, as I, uh, Instagram, and the different uh, the difference is the Discord channel. We use Discord channel to combine different uh, different student and make them have some co uh, con connected to each of them, and they can discuss some content knowledge. And we also have a YouTube channel because we will hold a uh, uh, maybe a conference or maybe a course in, in the Discord we, and we will record it and we will pass it on the, on the YouTube channel. So this is the feedback from the Hackson. But after we do all of this, um, we find out that uh, we, if we uh, hold a Hackson or hold a workshop, but we don't have the impact. Uh, we don't have enough impact in Taiwan content education because we only share this content experience or content technology to maybe forty people or seventy people. is not enough. So in these days, in twenty twenty three, and uh, in the August twenty twenty three, I will hold a, a conference it's called Qualcomm. And what is Qualcomm is? And Qualcomm is means the quantum revolution uh, assembly co convention. And this conference will um, go to maybe some undergraduate student and the high school student. Yes. And this is our, uh, and this is our, so uh, this is our uh, achievements we will, we will hold in this conference. And um, but we, I I think I don't have enough time to 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 tell yeah, you this. Yeah, yes. that's that's so, issue. But if if anyone is interested, they can reach out to you and learn yeah, more. Yeah, right? I introduce my PPT. Yes. Yeah, and also so this, I mean this all... you you can you can also share the presentation later and just keep that in mind so that we can also share it with the rest of the rest of the group. Okay. 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 It's okay, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Ryan Yu. And next we will have uh, Aziz, uh, and I think uh, we can just uh, continue. So if, if you can share your screen, see it. Yeah, so the floor is yours. I will be talking about uh, a non-profit I started this year. It's called Quantum in Africa. So a bit of background about me. I graduated from high school last year, and I took a gap year before uh, enrolling to college this year. And one of the areas I have invested my time in, uh, in was quantum computing. So I started with the qubit by qubit course. At the same time, I read some books, took some other online classes. And I can say that I built a foundational uh, understanding of quantum computing. So I started quantum in Africa with a discussion I had with my little brother. I uh, told him if he ever knew about quantum computing, he told no, he told me no. So I asked my friends, the same answer was no. So I uh, was uh, sure that there were that there was a lack of awareness about quantum computing in my country, Tunisia. And so uh, at the beginning, I started with Tunisia, but then uh, I decided to expand the impact to uh, uh, the African continent. So please, uh, do you hear me, guys? I, because uh, yeah, yeah, we okay. can hear you. Please continue. 
So uh, about Quantum in Africa, it is an educational initiative designed to empower African students in quantum computing. By providing educational resources and, and organizing workshops, events, we aim to shape the future qu quantum needle. So the workshops impact we did was uh, we organized, I organized outreach workshop to more than 150 students across three countries, Tunisia, Lesotho, and Ghana. So for Tunisia, the thing I did is I went to STEM clubs in my country and I asked them if they will be interested in learning about quantum computing. So for example, in my country, we have Microsoft clubs uh, throughout high school, university students. I asked them if they were willing to uh, learn about quantum computing and, and uh, some of them were interesting and that's how I connected to students in Tunisia. Now for uh, African countries, I was uh, an alumni of the Yale Young African Scholars Program. This is a summer program held at Yale University and it connects uh, African students together in a one week uh, program. So luckily I still had the connections from the program I did two years ago. And so I reached out to students from Lesotho and Ghana and we organized the workshops together. And uh, yesterday marks an important date uh, in the, my journey as an educator and in the journey of quantum in Africa. Yesterday marked our first in-person workshop in collaboration with the American Corner Genius in Amidist. And I had participants literally ranging from elementary school to graduate students. So yesterday's session was about qubits, Born's, uh, Born's uh, rule, and even participants had the chance to uh, use IBM quantum and build their quantum circuits uh, using gates like the X and Hada market. And yeah, oh, one thing uh, that we did uh, in the Quantum uh, in Africa initiative is I developed an educational mobile app uh, called the Quantum for Everyone. It can be, uh, it is available currently on the Google Play Store. I'm working on publishing uh, on the iOS uh, Apple Store because it is developed in Flutter. And you, as you see, we have reached more than 100 downloads in less than uh, six months. I think. And I've also made the YouTube uh, playlist of YouTube videos. I recorded explaining fundamental areas in quantum computing like qubits, quantum gates, quantum algorithms like Shores and Grover. And uh, just to know that these videos are in Tunisian dialect. So for the future work, uh, we will be working on collaboration with QLibia along with uh, Taima. So we will be organizing a workshop for students in Libya and uh, also more workshops to more in-person workshops to organize in the American uh, current teams. So all I can say now is thank you for attention. And I really appreciate being here among a community of uh, uh, quantum, uh, of people who are advocating for uh, quantum computing. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Aziz. That was, that was great and you are exactly on time. So I would like to invite Gideon uh, next to, to the uh, stage and it would be great if you can uh, share your screen. See whether it is. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, so the floor is yours. Yeah, if you can see my screen. So, um, I um, think I need to turn on my camera. All right, thank you everyone. And it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I am the founder of the Black in Quantum Computing, Blacks in Quantum. Um, we recently changed the name to Black in Quantum. And um, the goal of this initiative is to build an inclusive quantum community to inspire, support, equip, and also position Black people in the quantum ecosystem. So. This is our goal and um, the mission is embedded in the goal. And the first one is to inspire black and visible minority to pursue a career in quantum computing and also to build a support community that enhances learning and accelerates career development for blacks and visible minority professionals. So uh, we are targeting people who are interested in joining quantum computing, be it, um, um, people who are, who are still in high school, people who are still um, very young, uh, people who are already advanced in their career but are interested in um, getting into this field and also to equip and position a black and visible minority professionals for leadership position in the quantum ecosystem. Just the background to this is that uh, my journey into quantum computing actually informed my starting this initiative. I started quantum computing um, in my PhD, 
So even though I'd done my master's and um, I didn't have, let's say, the requisite background in quantum computing to really undertake a research in that, but I think my trying to explore what um, what could bridge, uh, what I could do differently with machine learning was what led me to quantum computing. And um, that informed my decision to get into a PhD in quantum computing. And then when I got into PhD, my PhD program, I discovered that there were very few black people. If at all I saw any, there's perhaps one or so. So I joined several committees and in the committee, perhaps I'll be the only black person in that committee. So I then realized that there's a need, there's a gap in the black community and there's a need to um, get more people interested in this. I, for one, if I had had the opportunity to um, know what quantum was back when I was in Africa, I think um, I would have pursued this career much earlier in uh, life. Um, and that's why I'm very much impressed with what Mohammed Aziz is doing. So keep it up. It's a great initiative you're doing. So to inspire people. And so this is actually what uh, this initiative is all about. And um, there are different things that we have planned to do. And we have started some engaging with people in the Black community. One of them is the outreach. And then we, in the outreach, what we plan to do is hands-on learning sessions for students at all levels of um, quantum computing. We plan to organize seminars. And um, yeah, uh, we had to shift our seminar because of some, um, um, some unforeseen um, challenges that we had, but we plan to get speakers to come to tell us stories about their journey into quantum computing. So if you're there, you will feel that your story can inspire people, please reach out and uh, we'll be really happy to have you. And also we're planning hackathons to encourage learning. Also, there is the initiative to reach out to high school. So the black community is so large and um, I know that this would involve partnering with other people in different countries because um, this is not just limited to people here in Canada or just in the US. Uh, it's it's an initiative that is beyond just one country. Also, we're planning mentorship programs to help match people, uh, students with people in the quantum, uh, quantum computing industry, and also to help people discover and amplify their talent and strength in this um, field. So um, I wouldn't want to bore us with too many details, but just also highlight that um, the broader vision for this initiative is that we want to encourage research and business innovation in uh, through um, Blacks and Quantum. So because uh, I know or it is the case that quantum computing is advancing and as it's advancing, people will come up with different initiatives for businesses. So uh, the Black community should not be taken aback by what is um, happening currently. And I'm sure there are people out there who have business initiative, they want to be, they want to propagate, they want to um, bring to fruition. This is an avenue to be able to support them through um, exposing them and also connecting them with uh, grants or research labs. So another thing that we're looking at is to connect researchers from the black community to professors who are established in this field, be it white professors or black professors. So we want to be able to make that connection so that black people have broader access to people who are already established in this field. So there is also this entrepreneurial development that we're planning where people uh, will be able to get people who have the skills to teach others to, um, to develop business plans and proposals in this field of quantum computing because uh, it's going to be great hopefully um, so and um, we are still growing and um, we are looking for volunteers and um, if you feel that this resonates with you please do well to join us and um, thank you this is our website and if you have any other question you can always ask me um, just to before i conclude um, this is our team myself and then Dr. Obina, who is um, a lecturer at the University of Newcastle, and also Obina in British Columbia is a student in quantum materials at um, SFU University. So yeah, thank you all. And um, it was great being part of this initiative. Thank you. Thanks, Gideon. And uh, it's, it's always great to see 
uh, someone also joining the meeting from space. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for the presentation. And let's let's continue with the next uh, presentation in the schedule, which should be Mustafa. Okay, perfect. So the the floor great. is yours. You have five minutes. I'm great. Thank you, Vicky. I so appreciate uh, for the great or um, community. Actually, we are. Uh, I'm Mustafa, the founder of Q Iran. Uh, Q Iran uh, is was founded in May 2022 as a national branch of nonprofit global uh, organization Q Award. We are a kind of uh, one of the Q cousins of Q Award. Our main popularize quantum computing and other topics of quantum science and technology to and wish to in such a field. Um, it, it's a kind of gateway, a kind of ancient gateway. Uh, it's, uh, I use it as a symbol, uh, one, for example, it can be taken for uh, all that want to join this second quantum revolution, especially in quantum computing. Uh, after establishment of Q Iran, we formed in our in community, Q education, Q research, and Q marketing. And we assigned um, any responsibility to each one of the departments. Um, we are discussing. Uh, uh, most of I think there might be an issue with the sound, so it would be great if you maybe you can turn off your camera for if it's a connection um, issue. Sure. Uh, sure. Or maybe it's just me, but I, I think others might be experiencing something similar. So, so sorry Is for the disruption. Yeah, yeah. I mute the camera. I hope you hear me clearly. We can hear a bit better now. Thanks. Yeah, uh, thanks. Can you, can, can you hear me? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. We have started this task with these uh, people from academia. Uh, some of them are in the meeting now, Omid and Shahla. And uh, we have started this path together. Uh, we have two strategic plans in space and time. Uh, uh, excuse me for this one. Uh, at the location, we, uh, we are anywhere. Uh, a kind of decentralized activities, collaborating with high school as a Q junior, uh, univer uh, universities as a Q university, individuals, public se uh, sector in the form of seminars, standard workshops, projects and different kinds of activities in this area. At the um, at time, uh, we divided our activities in three parts. Event-based activities is a kind of short-term, we organize Q talks, Q webinars, Q games, and program-based activities, it is between short-term and long-term, it took a line uh, between one or two weeks, like Q workshops, Q projects, Q conferences, and product-based activities, long-term or long term. Uh, for example, designing quantum game, designing educational content, educational materials. Uh, in time, uh, we divided our activities in these three, three parts. It is our strategic plan. Uh, we organize, uh, as I said, we organize different uh, events in our departments in Q education and Q research. In Q education, we organize uh, five different uh, workshops, a standard workshop, Q bronze, Q prep, and Q nickel from the basic level to uh, they are a kind of algorithm based workshops. Uh, to intermediate level quantum computing and quantum programming. Uh, you can see the pictures and the students in, in our workshop, the diplomas, the numbers, yeah, two different workshops. And you can see the table, all details in the table, how many diplomas issued, yeah. And we organized, a, we celebrated World Quantum Day on April 14 with six online talks and presentation. You can see the topics and, and, and see the presentation. Seth Gear was one of the great speakers in our events also. And uh, we organized uh, two projects, uh, a weeks long online program designed for students uh, after they uh, finish their, um, I don't know how to say, they finish uh, educational workshops. Uh, they engage with different research practice to use uh, key skills and uh, programming skills to uh, design um, and uh, 
two projects in this program. And uh, we had uh, nine projects uh, with uh, 20 teams with uh, 98 mentees. You can see the title of the projects, uh, students engage to them. And uh, now we are organizing Q summer school in two parts, uh, quantum summer children summer school, uh, because we want to, uh, we want to students to uh, participate in quantum game general uh, held online in Finland. Uh, in part one, we include a standard hands-on workshop focuses on basic and intermediate level quantum computing and programming like QPREP, QBronze, QNickel. And in second part, students uh, try to design some quantum games participate in this competition. It is, uh, it is on running now. And you can see the start of the QRAN summer school. And you can see, you can follow us in our social media, uh, in Discord, Telegram, and yeah, YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Thank, thank you, Mustafa. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so that that was good. And again, if you're interested in sharing the presentation, just uh, later on, just share it with me, and then I can distribute it uh, to the rest of the group. So now uh, I think we can continue with Joan. Happy to. Thank you, everybody. First off, I just want to say how much I've enjoyed learning about all of your initiatives. It's really inspiring, and I'm really I'm going to have a lot of emails I have to send after this session because I want to connect to many of you. Uh, so I am Joan. Uh, I'm the founder of the Quantum Ethics Project. I thought I'd just briefly show you. Uh, this is uh, our website, quantumethicsproject.org, uh, our YouTube channel, uh, and I can just hop into uh, the presentation. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, I'm the founder of the Quantum Ethics Project. I use she, her, or they, them pronouns. And I created this project while a master's student at the Institute for Quantum Computing. And the, the, the motivation for it was, you know, my own research focuses on quantum machine learning. And I was inspired by the conversations around uh, the ethics of AI and machine learning. And I wondered how that might apply to my own work. And this sparked uh, nearly, I've been working for, on this for nearly two years. Uh, and have built a global network of people who are thinking about the social, economic, and political impacts of quantum computing, sensing, communications. Uh, and we've built a very active Discord server where students are empowered to work on projects. Uh, researchers can find collaborators uh, who can provide other uh, kind of interdisciplinary support. We currently have a project that involves policy experts, technology experts, environmental experts, and I'll get more into that in a moment. But I very much hope to see many of you join our Discord server, and they'll post the link after this presentation. So really quick backing up, just to define what I mean when I say quantum ethics. Uh, quantum ethics is an emerging field concerned with the ramifications of quantum technology. What are the social impacts? What are the economic impacts? What are the political impacts? And at the Quantum Ethics Project, we focus on ensuring that quantum technology is used and developed for the greatest public good. Um, you know, we, we, we talk about a lot of different issues in quantum technology itself, but the Quantum Ethics Project can be loosely broken down into three core pillars. Uh, education at the left is very much in line with other presentations that we've seen today. And in fact, this is a big area that I'm hoping uh, to reach out to many of you to collaborate on, where I believe that, you know, we're not going to get a uh, just quantum revolution, one that is just, uh, just and equitable, if we do not have uh, diverse perspectives. Uh, so being able to develop educational materials that bring more people in uh, and provide more access to quantum is a big priority of mine. Another aspect of the education piece that's less about the diversity and outreach is trying to help people discuss and understand what the socioeconomic implications of quantum are. Uh, and this is a big area that I think has a lot of promise, especially for high schoolers, uh, if they're able to see this kind of big picture uh, implications of what quantum technology means. I believe this is a framework that can get more people interested and involved in the quantum revolution to begin with. And finally, the research pillar uh, really tries to, as I mentioned, provide researchers with collaborators uh, from multiple disciplines to be able to explore in in substantive detail, what are the uh, socio-political 
policy technical uh, dimensions of these problems. Uh, and I'll get more into that in a moment. You can see some examples of, of issues that we consider to fall under the umbrella of ethics. At the bottom, one of the key ones that I'll mention again is on the left is rhetoric and media hype. But many of these other issues, particularly equitable access, which I've already mentioned, and sustainability, which I'll mention in a moment, are important for us as well. So again, the purpose of the Quantum Ethics Project Discord community is to provide uh, the resources, the readings, the mentorship, and the expertise for students at all levels to do their own projects. This is an example of a project that was completed this year. Uh, it was just about, about a month long. A high schooler by the name of Nancy uh, wanted to explore what the newly announced Canadian National Quantum Strategy meant for um, funding opportunities for ethics research. Uh, and she put together a really incredible presentation and researched that well on her own with minimal, you know, kind of, we, we, we really try to, get, to give students the freedom to explore the questions that they are interested in. Another uh, presentation or workshop that was developed at the master's level by one of our core team members, Anna Kanur, was a workshop at the Perimeter Institute that discussed hype and public perceptions of quantum and what our obligations as researchers are uh, in developing and marketing our technology to ensure that we're not overhyping or overpromising what the technology can do. I really enjoyed Anna's presentation. And again, she came to us with an idea. We provided her with a first start on resources to get started. She put together a draft. We gave her some quick feedback. But again, ultimately, she was just empowered to do a project that she was interested in. And this is what our community is for. Finally, this summer, I've had students each do a little research project and give a presentation. Each of these thumbnails uh, correspond to YouTube videos that are on our YouTube channel. And again, this is kind of motivated by my students' own curiosity. And this one in the center, the hype of quantum environmentalism, uh, has served as the jumping off point for a larger research project that involves policy experts, uh, quantum technology experts, and environmental experts to try and understand what is the real promise of quantum in the environment. And I know uh, Emily uh, at the Push Quantum Initiative um, had some interest in this, so I'd love to connect with you over that as well. These are my students. Uh, as in addition to putting together their presentations for our YouTube channel, they're also each uh, working on implementing a code uh, benchmarking problem for variational quantum algorithms under a uh, research fellowship from the Center for Quantum Networks. And this is important because we, our work isn't about just the social dimensions. We want to give students, particularly students from diverse backgrounds, the opportunities to learn and experience the technical uh, in research, a technical research problem to have technical expertise in the field and also be able to discuss the social implications. And I'm very proud of my students so far. They've done a lot of really incredible work. Uh, so finally, a really quick kind of timeline of this year. It's been a busy one for us. We gave a first pilot lecture at the Perimeter Institute on what quantum ethics is for the PSI uh, uh, Perimeter uh, Scientist Inter International Program. We delivered an art, a webinar for Qubit by Qubit. We had an article come out about us at DeadCat LiveCat. Uh, September is going to be a busy one. We're going to be at IEEE Quantum Week. Hope to see some of you there. Uh, we're delivering workshops at Quera and Harvard as well through our collaborators. And then finally, a long-term goal of ours is to develop a full, uh, a full accredited course on the socioeconomic implications of quantum technology that we're hoping to pilot either at the Perimeter Institute or CU Boulder. This is that Dead Cat Live Cat article. I encourage you to check it out. It was really incredible. And they also showcase several other initiatives that are working on in this similar area to us. Uh, and then finally, this is an upcoming thing that I just put in very quickly, uh, but we'll be delivering uh, two workshops at the upcoming Quantum Institute for Quantum Computing Summer School for Young Students, one on quantum machine learning, which is my expertise, and then a few days later, something on quantum uh, social impacts. And again, this is something I feel is really crucial. If you're trying to get high schoolers interested in quantum, it's great to talk about what a qubit is. It's great to talk about Shor's algorithm, but you first can, mo if you can first motivate why they should care and how we expect quantum to impact their communities and their futures, this is going to open the floodgates to a much wider demographic of students that may have initially been turned off by a lot of the technical stuff. You bring them in with something they can understand that uh, I, I'm, I'm very excited about this workshop coming up. 
And then I just want to thank you all for listening. Um, I'm going to put the link to our Discord server, our YouTube channel, and our website into the chat. And I hope that each of you uh, reaches out to me over uh, to my email or connects with me on Discord. I'd really love to hear from you. Briefly thank our sponsors. And I encourage any questions. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, John. It was a great presentation, but I can't encourage any questions because we have to move on. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. Yeah. Email me then. Yeah, email, Discord, just just join the Discord, reach out, ask your questions. Uh, so let's continue with Carmen. Uh, can you can you share your screen? Okay, perfect. It's yes, already shared. Here I am. That is great. So let's see. Okay, the floor is yours. You have five minutes. Okay, thank you everyone. So so happy to be here today and it's not gonna be easy after all these amazing presentations. It's like presenting nowadays after a generative AI talk, but I will try my best. <laughs> and yeah, so the goal of the presentation is not just to tell you what we are, have done, but also to try to find where we can collaborate or where we think we can help to other communities around the world and where the questions that we have. So keeping that in mind, um, we are gonna talk about what we have done, uh, what what we, the process that we, our own research process on what we think we can learn from other communities, and then what we have developed and therefore what could be interesting to this audience. So what we have in Spain right now are three communities, one in Barcelona, one in Madrid, and one in Valencia. Um, each of them born in different times um, and as you can see um, in two of them we've done a Kiskit Hackathon that might be a well-known event for, for this group. Uh, Quantum Valencia is a special one because it was born unexpectedly by a group of volunteers that had seen what we had done in Madrid and Barcelona and they just decided to do it on their own. And in terms of social media, we are in Meetup, uh, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, there was another community, a fourth one, uh, Quantum Bilbao, and it's still there, but the only thing is that they have changed platform. They are not using Meetup anymore, so that's why I cannot uh, share with you the link here. So I'm gonna explain what these communities are with an example, the example of Barcelona. So the idea of these communities is that we are independent communities. Uh, we collaborate uh, or are supported by different entities, institutions, uh, public universities, and the members, the organizers, are also belong to different companies and organizations. But the idea is that we are independent and we participate in the community as individuals. Um, so here you can see some names of the institutions of the people who are involved or that have sponsored us at some point. And what we do is to foster the quantum community at a local level. So that's why the names are local and they have the name of a city because we encourage uh, live events and we want to pe people to, to meet each other in person. And the kind of events that we organize are informal meetups, workshops, lectures, and the biggest events that we have done are hackathons. So, uh, after some time uh, working with communities, one thing we did because the communities um, had been very successful and actually um, I, I joined the community team from IBM. I'm not working in IBM anymore, but uh, just to clarify why I did this research, um, because we wanted to understand what, what had worked. Uh, but we didn't just want to, to stop there but we also wanted to, to talk to other successful communities, which are the Google Developer Groups, which are also intrinsic to the, to the commun quantum communities in Spain because some of the members are also GDG organizers. So these are the people that we, talk, that we talked to and that we interviewed, and uh, we made them uh, a list of questions and we have some conclusions. So if anyone is interested in what we learn from there, they can ask us. I'm not going to share that here because I only have five minutes. But basically, the motto is that whenever you want to do a topic-centered um, community, you should not divide the community. For example, we should not create a community for Q-Sharp, another for Qiskit, another for quantum error correction, etc. What we want to do is do a community where everyone, every topic is involved, everyone is welcome, and um, 
the, attract, the attractive thing for companies to sponsor us is that we are a strong community and that they want to be relevant in the strong community. Uh, so after talking to the GDGs and also to the older organizers from all these four communities, we develop a document with the lessons learned around from four topics, strategy and organization, success and health of a community, communication and best practices and content. And we also develop two documents, one for guidelines and another one for best practices on how to get started if you wanted to create your own local community in your city. So I'm not going to share everything here. I just wanted you to know that this exists. And uh, my last, my, the last slide that I wanted to show is this one. So the questions that we bring to this uh, group, and I have seen some of them in the, in the chat. Um, if anyone who has founded a local community has decided to, to register as a nonprofit organization, the kind of platforms that you use, how do you find a sponsorship, and how do you manage the change of organizers? Because some people are doing a PhD, then they go to do a postdoc in another city. And therefore it's very reliant, uh, the success of the and health of the community is very reliant on the, on the engagement of the organizers that in the end are volunteers. So these are some four questions that I gathered that I think could, could be interesting to talk about maybe in the break, breakout rooms later. So yeah, thank you for your attention. And I'm gonna close it here. Thanks, thanks Carmen, it was great. And we would, I think a lot of us would be really interested if you can share the resources later on as well, uh, because it's just directly related to what uh, else of people here are trying to do. And, and let's- And thank you uh, for your questions. I think the questions were spot on. Um, yeah, I definitely agree. And so let's continue with Leah because you are next on the list. Okay, perfect. So Hi. yeah, the floor is yours. You have five minutes. Okay, let's go. <laughs> um, hello everyone. Um, uh, my name is Leah. Um, the organization I'm representing, um, we're just a not-for-profit, mostly more informal student community and, and uh, also non-students, so just beginner-friendly community for people interested in quantum universal education. Sometimes we go by just quantum universal education for short. We've got a Discord server, about 1,500 members, and uh, we're mostly run by an admin team, so we all met online uh, just at a, at Kiss Key Global Summer School in like 2020. And at the time, I think we were well, mostly undergraduates, and now we've kind of um, um, we've grown into um, uh, mostly still students, but and also early career in quantum. So those of us here today, um, in in the chat here, you can see uh, my name is Leah. I'm a PhD student at the University of Oxford and a part-time research engineer at Continuum. Um, uh, Kevin or Praveen, would you like to introduce yourself? I believe Alberto is busy, but um, if, if you're here too, you could say a few words. Absolutely, Leon. Well, my name is Ken Hoven. I am, as I said in the image, I am just an undergrade of electronic engineering. Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you. Ken? Uh, hello? Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Praveen, and uh, I am a digital uh, chemist in uh, Toronto, and nice to meet you all. And I believe Alberto is busy with, um, well, celebrations. So, so um, but um, at some future meetup, Alberto can also tell us in Q about Quantum Open Source Foundation, which he is very involved in as well. So let's go. Um, um, I'll go off topic for just this one slide is that um, I, so my early involvement in quantum education, I, I was running a course at my undergrad university, um, UC Santa Barbara, and uh, I also, and I TA'd for the 2020 to 2021, um, the first year of the Cubit Pi Cubit High School course. So um, I'm still involved in quantum education and currently I'm lead tutor of this quantum in pictures high school course. Um, which is an approach to try to teach quantum computing to high school level students. Uh, this course is just in the UK through entirely through pictures. So through uh, quantum graphical and pictorial um, approach as 
a way that's still mathematically formal, but can, uh, but you can express quantum computation and all and any quantum uh, computation and quantum teleportation and algorithms in this as well. So that that's uh, just a uh, mention. If anyone is interested, to, you just shoot me a message. Um, we also um, many of us involved in peak. Uh, which is the acronym of quantum universal education. Um, also are involved in the starting of the first and this coming September will be the second quantum science and engineering education conference. So um, uh, just a first conference I believe for education within quantum. And um, we're thinking about how we can help make that more accessible and uh, more open. So um, back to peak, um, two minutes, great. Uh, so it was we were um, it was possible for us to organize due to a unitary fund microgrant. So thanks so much to Misty and um, everyone at Unitary Fund who helps support these uh, grassroots and other um, um, communities and software and education. So the way we've mostly uh, started off with um, having anyone can and in the world can fill out any contribution of quantum educational materials could be a blog post could be how you made a quantum game could be a tutorial um uh, some and some guides and uh then you would get some editing interactively so we could even have our high school students contribute and uh then um once it's made public to everyone you could you just get a free t-shirt for uh for your efforts um, we've also done uh, events um, a few times a year, so we do beginner-friendly journal clubs uh, as a way that anyone could, if they find research papers can be intimidating, so um, so this could be open to people to hear from people and explain patiently uh, all going through any questions you may have. Um, we do a meme competition every Christmas and put out a meme calendar, one meme per month of the winners. And we did, this is our Spanish language hackathon that we've done annually since the past two years. So, so um, let's end uh, the last slide here in my, uh, the last minute is that uh, we are going to have our celebrate our third anniversary online this August. Um, I think we're planning talks and panels and just some meetups just for people to be able to connect about people with interest in any part of quantum, whether as a learner or educator. Um, so that would be quite exciting. <laughs> so thank you everyone for joining this, uh, I guess, meetup. I know it was short notice, but um, it's, I was really impressed and really excited and inspired to hear all of your um, talks so far and introductions and the discussions to come about the quantum grassroots efforts that you've all been doing. It's really incredible. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Leah. It was it was a great presentation, and you know I wore that free T-shirt to a lot of events. So just just to anyone out there sending out free T-shirts is a great way to you know advertise your organization because people wear that. I think you need to I'll send you a new one. It's been through a life cycle. <laughs> yeah, it has. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, so we have one final presentation uh, from Meike, and if you can share your screen. Can you hear me now? I yeah. think we can, but yeah, please, please continue. If, if there's an issue, we will warn you. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to hear <laughs> to be here. Um, I'm Meike. I'm from Quantum Coalition uh, Organization and Club. Uh, but we, we just learned this organization, that's why um, uh, we are not um, prepared um, presentation uh, like yours, that's why I'm sorry, and um, in advance I'm sorry to my exciting uh, for um, speaking to you, that's why um, there's a lot of stack on my language. <laughs> um, no problem at all, please. Okay. And the Quantum Co Coalition is a group of um, undergraduate students, uh, quantum computing clubs, founded in 2020, 
Yep, 2020 as a partnership between Stanford and Yale. Um, and previously, we organized QC Hack uh, 2021. Um, and this year, the coalition has grown to include clubs, Duke, Berkeley, UT Austin, the University of Maryland, and the Izmir Institute of Technology. Uh, I'm also um, co president from Izmir Institute of Technology and included uh, Quantum Coalition membership. Um, our organization commit, uh, committed to creating experience where anyone can exchange scientific ideas, learn and take the next step on their quantum journey. And this our conference leadership. Um, And yeah, <laughs> um, this year Squid. Uh, we organized symposium uh, Squid for the first time this year. Symposium on quantum uh, undergraduate inquiry and discovery. There are uh, twelve quantum clubs from different university. Uh, Squid first uh, ever global quantum research conference for undergraduates. Um, it's important to us and because we think we should create a more inclusive scientific research space uh, for undergrads. Um, uh, we can experience uh, working as a team uh, and making poster presentation, presentation uh, during this uh, period, squid periods, and uh, this participants. Um, in addition, um, this event uh, held on uh, three days and participants joined virtually um, career fair uh, network uh, session, um, uh, panel, or and other quantum research uh, presentation. And also, we believe no barriers uh, barriers for research and this event. Uh, that's why <clears throat> we start to create an um, advisory board for a long time uh, for Squid, um, helping the quantum clubs no prior experience or access to some sort of supervision um, to create research and project uh, like this. Um, uh, with this way, uh, we can um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah uh, we can enlarge the community um, uh, sorry. Um, and also you can uh, look into um, presentation and other topics on our YouTube channel. Um, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry, no problem. I'm, like, sorry. Uh, no, 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 but that's, that's all right. Thank you for listening. That, yeah, thank, thanks for thanks for presenting and being a part of this event. Uh, and, you know, as, as usual, if you want to prepare and share some slides uh, afterwards, yeah. you are welcome to do so. Yeah. So, ah, you know, thanks. Yeah, so th this goes for everyone as well. If you want to, you know, alter your slides, you don't have to share the slides that you showed here. It's 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 it's, uh, it's up to you. Uh, yes, so we are at the end of our presentations, and uh, according to the schedule, we are just fifteen minutes uh, late. Uh, 